Thank you for joining us today for our Transfer Express webinar. Today we are pulling away the covers on search engine optimization for those of you who may not be familiar with this topic. This will be a general introduction into a very technical topic. We are going to assume that you know very little or nothing at all about search engine optimization, also known as SEO. When you are done, you'll have a basic understanding of what SEO is and why it's important to your business. You will also receive a roadmap as to how you can get started with SEO for your business. My name is Eric Pryor and I will be your presenter today. Currently, I am the Digital Marketing Manager at Transfer Express. My areas of responsibility include search engine optimization, paid search, digital analytics, and email marketing. Before we go any further, I'm obligated to provide a legal disclaimer. Transfer Express hereby disclaims all warranties and conditions express, implied, statutory, or otherwise regarding the contents of these materials, including without limitation, all warranties of title, non-infringement, merchantability, and fitness for a particular purpose. Transfer Express is not liable for any claims, losses, or damages of any kind arising out of or in any way related to this information provided by presenters of these webinars. If you'd like to read the disclaimer in detail, it will be available in the replay. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's get down to business. My goal here is to make this a fun and enjoyable webinar. To that end, I've worked hard to ensure that you do not experience death by PowerPoint. We are going to have some fun and you're going to get a basic introduction into SEO as well as learn some things that you can do to get started immediately. I'm a great lover of the sci-fi fantasy genre for movies and books. Some of you may be familiar with the movie The Matrix, where Morpheus, played by Lawrence Fishburne, asked Neo, played by Keanu Reeves, how far down the rabbit hole does he want to go? He gives him the choice of taking the red pill or taking the blue pill. In our case, if we take the red pill, we go all the way down the rabbit hole and learn about all the technical, creative, management, and business aspects of search engine optimization. However, that is not what we are going to do. We are going to take the blue pill. The blue pill takes us down a much gentler path to learning about SEO, since this is a basic introduction seminar. We're going to assume that you don't know much or know anything about SEO. In this introduction, we'll learn about what SEO is all about, the top five things you can do now to get started, about some free and paid tools that you can use, and finally, what you should do next. A search engine is software that collects information on websites, specifically all of the text, images, videos, and other information that can be gleaned from the pages that make up a website. Search engine optimization is the process of affecting the visibility of web pages in what we call the natural or organic results. This does not include paid ads. Here's a search for goof-proof heat transfers. We can see a variety of results presented. In this example, notice that there are no ads in the search results, although there very well could have been. So why does one set of pages show up more prominently than the others? This is a topic of vast debate. The process of influencing visibility of a web page, again, is called search engine optimization or SEO. Here's a definition of search engine optimization. In many respects, SEO is a very technical undertaking. That being said, there are some very basic and simple concepts that are extremely powerful and can take your SEO marketing efforts very far. To introduce these, let's take a look at popular culture and see what we can learn from the Game of Thrones. The Game of Thrones is a fantasy series written by George R. R. Martin with an overarching theme of good versus evil. You probably could have guessed that, where several different families are fighting for the Iron Throne to be ruler of the Seven Kingdoms. 
Many of you may have just watched the season finale of season seven and are, like me, sad to wait almost two years for the final season. Life is tough. You may find it interesting, though, that it is possible to compare life in the Game of Thrones to search engine optimization. Tyrion Lannister is my favorite character in the Game of Thrones. He is a dwarf and as such does not have the physical size and skills to survive sustained combat and rule by force alone. Yet he uses his intellect, quick wit, and command of language to not only survive but to rise to the station of one of the most powerful and influential people in this fictitious realm. As business people seeking to influence people and sell online, it's important that we have a great command of content. We have to really understand the target audience we want to serve. What is it they are interested in? What kind of problems are they trying to solve? Who do they look to for advice and how? What is the best way to reach them? Content has increasingly been becoming one of the most key ways to be visible online in search engine rankings. Write great content and people will appreciate it and share it. All of the major characters in Game of Thrones are very powerful and impressive in their own way. Some are peerless warriors, others brilliant tacticians, and still others ruthless monarchs and members of the privileged class. Being allied with or respected by these characters goes a long way in staying alive as well as accomplishing the goals you have for your friends, family, and kingdom. It's actually no different in the online world when trying to beat your competitors at their own game. If a website that is very trusted also trusts your web presence, your influence, growth, and authority increase. Your ability to appear at the top of the search engines grow. And as your power grows, other websites that you in turn trust will grow in influence. But making powerful connections is hard work, both in the fantasy world of Game of Thrones as well as the wild, wild west of the internet. In the series, Daenerys Stormborn is the mother of dragons. However, her full title is extremely impressive and intimidating and carries a great deal of influence. Here is her title being announced. Daenerys Stormborn of the House Targaryen. First of her name, the Unburned. Queen of the Andals and the First Men. Khaleesi of the Great Grassy, Breaker of Chains, and Mother of Dragons. In contrast, the King of the North was introduced simply as Jon Snow in a first encounter with Daenerys Stormborn. Jon Snow. Not much to write home about as far as titles go. As it turns out, the use of titles also is applicable to SEO. The title of a page is one of the strongest signals you can send to search engines about the content of that page. Having a page title that closely relates to the content and intent of a page is very beneficial to helping a page rank. As your content becomes shared amongst more influential sites on the internet, it will grow in authority and relevance. As an example, if Joe's Pizza links out to your site, it's not as valuable as if Amazon.com links out to your site. Why? Because Amazon is huge in terms of authority and reach. So a link to your page by Amazon that matches up with your title and the content of your page can provide a huge advantage in search engine rankings. Let's look at an example of information architecture that is familiar to all of us. The experience of being in a library and searching for resources on a specific topic. What you see before you is a bit of an absurd example of a collection from which we might have a need to locate information. Faced with this task, how would we actually go about finding a book, audio, or video on a specific topic in this library? Let's take a look at how we would locate a book in a library and how this relates to search engine optimization. The answer as to how we'd find a book in the library lies not with the book at the library, but with the library itself. Firstly, for this example, think of websites as books. Next, think of the Google index as the card catalog index. When you needed to find a book, 
before the world of computers, you went to a file drawer filled with paper cards that were organized by subject and author to find a book. In the internet world, information about subject and author is contained in a search engine index. Next, think of the librarian as a search engine, in this case Google, although we could use other search engines like ask.com or Bing. Next, think of a student in the library who is looking for a book. The student will approach the librarian for assistance in locating a relevant book. In the internet world, we have a web searcher sitting in front of her computer looking for information. So let's think about a specific example. The student speaks to the librarian needing a book on global warming. The librarian then goes to the old school card catalog file or to her computer and looks for information on global warming. Success results in finding the perfect book on global warming. In the online world, a student web searcher sits down at her computer and visits Google which is a search engine, and enters the term global warming. Google's search engine then takes a peek in the search engine index, which contains information on various web pages that have this information. The student is presented with a list of search results from which she selects a description and is taken to a website. In the library, there are a number of things that have to be in place for this magic to happen. Firstly, the book has to be part of the library collection. Secondly, the book has to physically be in the library in order to be taken out as a loan item. Thirdly, the book has to be in its proper place so that it can be found. If the global warming book is in the auto mechanics section, it won't be found. Fourthly, the book has to be cataloged properly. If the global warming book is cataloged as a book on disk breaks, it won't be found for a global warming search. So the job of a library employee would be to make sure that all of these things were in place and in order to have a successful search. Think of this as the job of an SEO professional in the real world, working in partnership with the librarian to make sure that everything is in place so that it can be easily found in an efficient manner. So now consider that we have a well-organized library and all of the books can be easily found. How do we find the best book? The title of our book determines where it sits on the shelves. The content of our book determines how popular it is. The reputation of the author also impacts how popular the book is. If the book is in poor shape and looks like it came from 1930, you might not be inclined to pick it up. Has the book been recommended by a book club, or does it have a lot of positive reviews? Having someone work with the author to ensure that when the book is published, it stands the best possible chance of being found and frequently purchased is also something that you can think of as the job of an SEO professional working in partnership with the author to ensure everything possible is being done to make the book a bestseller. So we can see that library science and authorship all have to be working on all cylinders to ensure that a great book gets published that can be easily found. Now let's take a look at the online version of this scenario. Firstly, we have to make sure that we have a well-designed, clean site that has excellent content that is relevant to our searcher who in this case is looking for global warming content. To do this, we have to understand what keywords are relevant and make sure that our web pages are organized with key elements. To make this happen, a variety of roles need to collaborate. This can be done by one person or a team. SEO, web designer, programmer, and content developer ideally all work together to create a content-rich website that is cleanly designed and ripe for a visit from Google and other search engines. The next piece of the puzzle is ensuring that the website does not pose any barriers or restrictions to search engines. Additionally, we want to promote our website on the internet so that we can earn links from a variety of other websites. When all of this comes together, we have done our job to provide excellent content on a website that is optimized for search engines 
and finally courting recognition by other websites so that we can beat our competitors in the search engine rankings. So now, how do we get started? Let's take a look at the five things you can do today to get started. We're going to take a few minutes and talk through the top five things you need to know right now that you can employ to get started with search engine optimization immediately. Firstly, we always want to write content for humans. Secondly, we want to think about all of the possible questions that people might ask. And we call this the long tail. Thirdly, we want to have a clean and well-designed site and set ourselves up for success when the search engine spiders come to visit. We then want to earn links from other sites that find favor with our content. And as visitors come to those sites, they'll see links to our site and visit. And this would be the same for search engine spiders. And then finally, get social. We want to diversify our efforts by using social media and email marketing. Google was launched on September 4, 1998 in Menlo Park, California. The goal was to deliver relevant results when you search for a topic. Google sought to be disruptive in the nascent search engine marketplace, and they have certainly accomplished that. There is an ongoing cat and mouse game between search engine companies and those who seek to influence search engine results to gain advantage. Here's a cartoon that illustrates this dynamic. A blog article is being written by an author. Originally, it was well written and served an audience particularly well with its content. Yet, in an effort to gain advantage, the SEO professional optimized the article. Get used to hearing this term, optimized. So now the article is nonsensical to humans and simply does not make sense. The response is, yeah, but search engines like it. Humorously, someone had a meme going around and it kind of went like this. You can lie to your spouse, but do not lie to Google. Funny, yet perhaps somewhat true. The moral of this story is to write excellent content for humans, not content that just gets by and not content that's written for search engines or machines. If you're going to compete, you have to be the best. If you are a t-shirt creative company in Columbus, Ohio, do everything that you can to deliver value to your audience and customers by helping them. If you help your prospects and customers, you'll be rewarded with social media likes, links to your website content, and ultimately revenue from sales. Looking for the long tail. Now before I get into detail, I want you to think about how you personally look for information. You may be interested in a new television, so you might start with flat screen TV. Then you might think about internet TVs. And then you might start to think about LCD versus projection TVs. And you might end up looking for a local company. Well, whether you know it or not, you are heading down something we call a marketing funnel. It sounds very highbrow, but it's actually very practical. What you see here is an artist's rendition of a marketing funnel that takes you from a very general search through looking for specific information to the ultimate, which is finding a reputable company that you can make a purchase from. So let's consider an example. Jenny has a family reunion coming up and has been given the job of looking into t-shirts for the family. She might amble over to Google and type in the search term t-shirts. She's going to get a whole lot of results that are going to be dominated by very powerful websites. So this is a starting point for her. Next, she might be thinking about what her family t-shirt should look like and she might type in the term t-shirt designs. So. She is sharpening the ax at this point. Here is the question she's asking. How do I design an awesome t-shirt for my family? As a business person, are you going to be there to answer that question? Now that Jenny has some preliminary research out of the way, it's time to get down to brass tacks. She needs a family reunion t-shirt and is looking for ideas. So her next search is family reunion 
t-shirts. Again, is your website answering the question that she is asking? So now we come to the end of the story and Jenny wants to actually find some company to produce her family reunion t-shirts. Jenny lives in Columbus, Ohio. There are certainly companies outside of Columbus that can help her, but are there any local companies? Are you one of those companies? Or if you're not in Columbus, can you help her? You may have heard the term beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Well, that's pretty much true with Google and other search engines. Let's take a peek at a search for best t-shirt website. We see a variety of websites that show up above the fold or at the top of the search engine results for Google. One of the top websites that shows up is Threadless. Visually, this looks pretty good, but you are probably asking yourself, what's so special about this site and why does it rank so well? That, my friend, is an SEO rabbit hole question that can get pretty complex. Yet, in the spirit of our webinar, which is a gentle introduction to search engine optimization, let's look at a few things that you can do right now to help you promote your business online. Let's take a look at some of the elements of a web page that can help your business website rank well. I'm going to focus on what to do and not specifically how to do it. There are many ways to build websites. Please concentrate on what needs to be done. As it turns out, the title of your web page is extremely important to Google and other search engines with respect to understanding what your page is about. We're going to take a look at a blog post from Transfer Express. First up is the title of your web page. We talked about this previously as it pertained to Daenerys Stormborn and her title. When you mouse over the tab of your browser, and I'm using Chrome most of the time these days, the title of the web page is very specific to starting a t-shirt business in this example. Starting a t-shirt business, how to become an expert. If I were looking for information on this topic, this might be a pretty important page. Your title is one of the most important signals you can send to Google and other search engines. For all of the important pages on your site, and really all of the pages on your site, make sure that you are declaring the title of your web page and it matches the content and intent of your web page. Next up is a heading. This is used to call attention to the content that you're going to present. It further helps, most importantly, humans and secondarily search engines understand what your content is about. In this example, we want to make sure people understand that our article is about starting a t-shirt business and becoming an expert. So you have to make this a heading in your article. Finally, we have to have really good content. Is your article better than every other article on this subject on the web? This is the bar you have to rise above. If your article, article is, mm, well, first of all, it will be of less use than the best article on the web. And secondly, nobody is going to endorse or share your article. Again, the lesson here is to publish excellent content and make sure that the information on all of your web pages is well organized and gives Google what it wants. Google has long been encouraging site publishers to ensure that their content can be viewed on mobile devices. This has been a slow march, yet the moment of truth is fast approaching. Here's a chart prepared by SmartInsights.com showing the volume of searches that are conducted on mobile devices versus desktops. You can see that the tipping point was in 2015 and clearly more searches are being initiated from mobile devices, which means that there are significant numbers of people viewing your content on mobile devices. Google has announced that if your content is not mobile friendly, it will be penalized in mobile search results. Here is what our marketing kit page looks like on TransferExpress.com when using a desktop. Next up is what the same page looks like when formatted for a mobile device. Early on in the game, publishers would have two different versions of their website. 
one for mobile devices and one for desktops. As technologies have advanced, we now have what is called mobile responsive websites where the software adapts to the dimension of the screen. If you don't yet have a website, ensure that when you do launch, your site is able to support mobile devices. If you do have a website that is not optimized for mobile devices, you should begin to plan for an upgrade. Content is not just the printed word. Images, audio, and video are all examples of rich media that can further educate, entertain, and engage site visitors. It's important because rich media offers another level of experience, and as we all know, video is in high demand. This is also important because Google and other search engines take note of how much time people spend on your site. If you have engaging content, they'll stay longer, interact with it more, and share it more often. This is emerging as one of the greatest and most important ranking factors because it is a strong indicator of how visitors value your site and its content. In the Game of Thrones example, we discussed how it was important to know someone who was influential and how this is the same on the web. Let's take a look at the search for Family Reunion T-shirts Columbus, Ohio. There are likely a host of reasons why CheapTees.com is coming up prominently in the search engine results. What we want to concentrate on right now is how many other websites actually share this page. This concept is known as a backlink and it is one of the most powerful concepts that you can learn about in SEO. If a website provides a link to this page, Google and other search engines take notice. Hmm, somebody finds value in this page. This is going to get a little technical, but we'll keep it as simple as we can. We can look at the number of backlinks to this site by using the website moz.com. We can see that there are 1,122 links to this web page. What we see here is the URL cheaptees.blogspot.com. Blogspot is a hosted site where anyone can create a free website. There are restrictions to creating a site here, but the good news is that the site carries a lot of authority. We talked about having powerful friends before. If you look here, you'll see the text Family Reunion T-shirt with a blue underline, which means it is a hyperlink or backlink to another site. Guess what? This is the very website we are looking to promote. So the moral of the story is to find places where you can promote your website and obtain backlinks. Social media is really completely beyond the scope of what we can cover in this webinar. That being said, it can be a very important and powerful component of your digital marketing strategy. If we log into Facebook and enter a search for T-shirts Columbus, Ohio, we get the following result. There are a variety of entrepreneurs who have established a social media presence. The value here is not so much influencing search engine rankings as it is connecting with your target audience. Here is the Mr. Shirts Facebook group. They are publishing regularly and apparently satisfying their audience because they are being rewarded with favorable placement on Facebook. If you have social significance, people will visit your website. If people visit your website, stay a while, and then share it, Google and other search engines will take notice. This will ultimately help with your ability to compete for organic search engine results. So now let's take a look at some live examples. We'll continue to use the example of Jenny, who has been given the task of producing t-shirts for her family reunion in Columbus, Ohio. We're going to speak about some basic tools that you can use for search engine optimization. However, I want to take just a couple of minutes to outline a very simple and useful and powerful exercise that you can undertake simply by taking your understanding of your business, what you understand about the target audience that you're trying to reach, and using a web browser. Let's think about Jenny, who was given the task by her family of designing and producing t-shirts for her family reunion. Jenny might start out typing something very general, um, and we would call this a head term, t-shirts. And there's going to be a lot of results that come up. 
the first thing we notice is that there are quite a few ads for t-shirts. This is a very competitive area. And over here on the right in the knowledge graph area, Google is trying to anticipate what we're trying to show. If we were to type an individual's name, we might have some copy that was pulled from Wikipedia. But in this case, this is an e-commerce dominated search. We see that Google understands where I am. So I am at Transfer Express in Mentor, Ohio. So it's showing me what it perceives as the top three companies in the area or top three local results. And then we start to see our organic results. So what I want you to think about is the kind of websites that are showing up for different searches. So that's very general. Jenny might then reasonably pose a different question. How do I produce a family reunion t-shirt? So we have fewer ads and then we start to see perhaps some of the same companies, in this case Custom Inc. Um, but now we see uh, family reunion t-shirts and apparel. So here is a company that actually has a page that's dedicated to family reunions. And we previously spoke about the importance of title tags. So if we mouse over the top here, we see that they indeed have a title that matches our, sh our search. And there is copy or content on the page that matches our search intent. Now, what I'm trying to get you to do is to think about different searches that you might enter and then look at different companies that are showing up, take a look at their sites and get a feel for the kind of content that's entered. Here's a list of possible searches that are entered. Notice that I'm not typing in or recommending necessarily trying to compete on the basis of a head term like t-shirt alone. Certainly it's something you can go after, but that's going to be very competitive. If I am a t-shirt custom apparel producer in Columbus, Ohio, I'd probably want to answer that question on my website, perhaps have a page that specifically spoke to that question. So it, quickly in review, what we're going to do is use Google. We're going to think about questions that our customer set, our target audience might pose, write those down, start to type those in, take a look at the kind of websites that show up, particularly if a website shows up for multiple different search terms, start to study those sites, take a look at that content. And then if you are building a new website, look at using this kind of research to guide the pages that you're going to build. And then if you have an existing website and you're seeing that you don't have this kind of content, then you have an opportunity to add additional pages. This is a very basic yet powerful exercise that you can undertake. So let's talk tools, which is one of the favorite topics for SEO professionals, content marketers and site owners alike. There are hundreds of tools available on the internet. Some of these are simple and intuitive, and others are complex and powerful and require an additional level of training, experience, and insight to be successful. Today, in keeping with our theme of a very basic introduction, we are going to provide three tool suggestions to get you started. First on our list, you guessed it is Google itself. We've already used Google to perform some basic research. However, there are some amazing things you can do with the Google search engine to make your searching more targeted. You can also do some things you perhaps didn't know about. First, we can use the site command to get an estimate of how many pages of a website Google has found and placed in its index. Google usually doesn't give the exact number but you can use this to get a feel for how large a site is. So let's take a look at custom t-shirts columbus.com. So we'll visit the site and it's rendered. And if we click in front of it and type S I T E colon and hit return, what we'll get is a listing of approximately of the pages that Google has placed in its index. And you'll see that there are about, quote unquote, about 913 results. And we can scroll through this easily and have a gander at the various pages that are part of this website. 
Now, we also talked about how important titles were. What if we wanted to know how many sites had heat transfer in the title? Well, we could type in the following search. Oh, actually, let's just go back to Google just to make it easy for everybody. So I'm going to type this in. So we're going to use the all in title command. And we're going to look for all websites that have heat transfer in the title. Now, if we hit enter, what we'll see is a listing of various websites that have heat transfer. Um, and so you'll notice that a lot of these don't necessarily apply if we're looking for t-shirt related business or apparel related business. So we could add t-shirt on the end of the search to get a bit of a more refined result. So here we'll just uh, come up here and then we'll add t-shirt. So now we're getting a little closer to what we perhaps were intending. There's a lot of results here, and there's also a lot of results that actually may have a site like Amazon in there. So if we want to get rid of Amazon, we can use an exclusion parameter. So if we type a minus sign, and then the keyword or term that we want to exclude from the results, in this case, Amazon, and we hit return, and we scroll down, you'll see that Amazon has now been removed from the search results. Now, many of the sites that are appearing in the search results will have the term heat and the term transfer, but they're not necessarily together. Um, so you'll notice, like in this one uh, from ProWorldInc.com, we've got transfer and we've got heat. But if we wanted to have results where we were exclusively looking for all pages that had heat transfer together as a word, to, um, again, excluding Amazon and also looking for t-shirt related topics, we've placed the words heat transfer in double quotes. And then now you'll see that the results that are being returned are specifically um, for URLs that have t-shirt in the title with heat transfer together. So this is an example of how you can further refine it. Um, kind of switching gears a little bit, let's just go back to Google's main page. What if we wanted to search Facebook for or other social media sites for specific topics. Well, you can use the at sign and then enter Facebook. And then t-shirt printing. Let's say we were looking for um, Facebook groups or subjects on t-shirt printing. We could enter this search. And I've been doing a lot of searching here, so Google wants me to determine or verify that I'm not a robot. And this will happen to you sometimes. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of software that will go out and automatically try to gather data. That's um, something that Google tends to frown upon. So I'm just letting Google know that I am a person. And here we go. And so now we've got a bunch of results that actually are from Facebook on the subject of t-shirt printing. Now we can also do things like add numbers. So if we gonna go back to Google, and I don't have to do this, I can actually type in my search up here in the address bar. So if I want to, let's say, add one, two, three, four, five, six, and 789, I can simply type this up here and Google is going to add that for me and furthermore give me a very nice calculator that I can use. If I'm interested in understanding the trade-offs between apples and oranges, I can type in oranges versus apples. And it'll you know, find some nice URLs that give me the summary of that information as well as a nice summary up here and then finally if I wanted to let's say translate um, uh, translate good morning to German I could type translate to 
to German. And it'll translate it for me as well as speak to me. So it's really a good idea to get to know your friendly search engine a lot better to help refine your search efforts. Next up is the subject of researching keywords to build your content upon. One of the best tools that you can use, you guessed it, is Google. Firstly, if I search for t-shirt business and then start to really examine the sites that come up, I can get a feel for the content and keywords that those successful websites are using, Su successful in regard to how highly they show up in the search engine results. But another thing that I can do is take a look at the bottom of the search window. Google will show you questions that people are asking as well as related searches great for your research. One of my favorite tools is KeywordTool.io. There's a free version as well as a paid version of the tool. It's great because in addition to related searches, it will highlight questions that people are asking. If you use the paid version, you'll even get the data related to organic and paid searches. One word of advice, you're going to see much less volume for a long tail searches, yet remember when people are asking questions, they're getting closer to buying and you want to be the person or the site available to answer those questions. Let's take a quick look at KeywordTool.io. Firstly, the free version. You can see that when we type in a search for t-shirt business, we're being shown related keywords, um, and you'll notice that there's a nice dialog box here letting us know that we can get more if we're willing to pay. And then we can also click on the questions tab, and it's showing us questions that people are really posing in the search engines. Now, if we actually log in, we can see even more. So I'm going to pause for a moment and log into my account. So. Now I'm logged in and you'll see that in addition to just having more volume in terms of questions that people are posing, I'm actually getting access to data. So total search volume, I'm also getting paid search volume, uh, indication as to what the competition is like, and I've also got some handy dandy tool tips that pop up. So this is a great tool. There are similar tools out there, again, dozens and dozens of them, but this is one that you can use to get started if you already don't have a free set. Um, you'll also find that most SEO professionals prefer to use a variety of tools. No one tool is a panacea or it's going to cover all the bases, and you may find that for certain tasks, you prefer one tool or another. Moz is huge in the SEO industry. The company started out as an agency and then morphed into an education and software company. There are extensive resources available for people of all experience levels. Moz offers free tools as well as a paid version that provides more capability. There's a free plugin that you can add to your browser as well as tools for researching keywords, link building opportunities, site performance, ranking, and more. Moz also offers tools for managing local business listings. This is one of the best tools that you can take advantage of. So we have covered a lot in this brief introduction. SEO can be daunting, yet remember, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Now we've shared a top five things to know. If you ask five SEO professionals their opinion, you are likely to get five different answers. But we have to start somewhere, and this is what we chose to present to you. So let's review quickly. Firstly, always write for people and not machines. Produce excellent content and you'll be rewarded. Secondly, embrace the long tail. We want to answer questions that people are posing. Uh, things have changed over the last 20 years in the search engine world. So rather than typing in cryptic searches, people are using more la natural language. So you want to be available to answer those questions. You want to have a clean, well-designed site. We talked about the importance of having a mobile-friendly site. This is really, really important. So think about that and also think about some of the key tags that you want to have on your site, like the title tag, as an example. 
we want to get some backlinks and you don't have to go crazy here if you get your local chamber of commerce or perhaps a magazine or blogger to have some interest it doesn't take a lot of backlinks to help you rank particularly if you're trying to rank in a local geography and then finally you want to get social so you want to connect with people on social media and we also want to take advantage of local directories so that your content and your brand gets shared so what's next well here's what you might consider first of all research your target audience and competitors next perform some base research on keywords and questions that you'd like to answer get local if you're a t-shirt business in Columbus Ohio there are a variety of directories that people will take advantage of to find businesses that can provide the services that they're interested in a resource that you can use is moz.com slash local so for I believe nine dollars a month they will help push your information to local listings get social create some social media presence for your company good places to start are Twitter Facebook and YouTube Beware fake news. There's a lot of bad and or outdated SEO information. And SEO information that's good today can be outdated a week later if Google or some of the other search engines make a change. So tread lightly, look for reputable sources of information, and trust but verify. Find someone that you can trust. Uh, digital marketing is a team sport. It's a vast area, and it's tough for anybody to be highly competent in all areas. So find a consultant or professional that you can trust. Give value, and you're going to be rewarded. Uh, give first before you receive, and most of all, have fun. Thank you. It's been a pleasure providing this basic introduction to SEO. We've been answering questions in the chat throughout the presentation. We've got a bit more time left and we can address any remaining questions.